are continuing with right striving samma padhana the second talk in the series of the 37 enlightenment factors now in our last talk we explained the nature of right striving the way the buddha practiced that right is striving ultimate his final realization of nibbana today i thought of explaining the factors of the samapadhana the right striving right effort or striving as a quality is something a singular unity it is a singular entity divided into four types in accordance with the manifestation or the function of this right effort now in many suttas buddha explains how one applies this right effort for the purpose of getting rid of this recurrence process of suffering or the samsara the first one is anupannanam papaka nam akusalanam dhammanam Anupadaya. For the non arising of the unarisen, unwholesome states. The second one is Upananam Papakanam Akusalanam Dhammanam Pahanaya. For the abandoning of the arisen, unwholesome states. Now these two belong to the category of unwholesome. How to handle, how to deal with the unwholesome, the meritorious states of mind. Third and fourth categories belong to the wholesome. Anupannanam kusalanam dhammanam upadaya for the arising, for the genesis of the unarisen wholesome states. Upannanam usalanam dhammanam chitya asammosaya bhiyo bhavaya vepullaya bhavanaya paripurya. For the arisen wholesome states, Titiya for their continuance. Asammosaya for the non decay. Bhiyo Bhavaya for the increase. Vepullaya for the expansion. Bhavanaya Paripuriya fulfillment of development. Now, in this talk i'm not covering the last two categories of wholesome states of mind how to handle them in the case of putting effort we are concentrating upon the unwholesome side akusala and how are we putting our effort? How should we putting our effort to get rid of them? The first one is Anupannanam Papakanam Akusalanam Dhammanam Pahanaya Anupadaya For the non-arising of unarisen 
unwholesome states. Buddha says one has to develop such a longing towards this quoting of the arising of those unarisen unwholesome states. They are there inside, within us, dormant, in sleep. It is there. How do we put our effort to stop them ever coming to the surface, becoming alive within us? Buddha says, you have to chandang janeti, create desire. Now, chanda is translated, it means desire. But this chanda is not at all similar to the other derogative terms like raga, lobha, tanaha. This chanda is something like ethically invariable. If there is greed and hatred and ignorance behind, this chanda becomes unwholesome. But if there is a positive, bright, energy behind this longing quality. For example, longing to be meditative, longing to observe precepts and preserve, longing to share something you have more than you need. Uh, that is chanda with the positive roots of non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion. So chanda translated, it means desire, it means longing, but it is ethically variable in the sense of that chanda must be understood whether it is unwholesome or wholesome based on the root elements of wholesome or unwholesome, greed, hatred, delusion, unwholesome, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion, wholesome. So based on the roots, you understand that chanda, whether it is right or wrong. So all these four strivings to become something effective, something fruitful. There must be a longing in your heart to strive, to work hard, put effort. Chandang Chaneti. Create a desire on it. Vayamati. Make an effort. Viryang Arabhati. Arouses energy. Chittang Pagganhati applies his mind. Padahati strives. So that's how Buddha explains when somebody puts his wholehearted effort in the process of getting rid of. Those unwholesome states which are dormant, asleep within you, waiting for the right time and occasion to rise up, come to lie, become alive, become dominant in you. How to get rid of them? 
there must be some effort on it and the next one is how to get rid of those unwholesome states that have already arisen in you so the effort to get rid of the negative disastrous and wholesome side of our lives is the first part of the four categories of the effort right effort now we are in a dual state of consciousness this duality is that we are both good and the bad if someone is good today it means he has the environment to be good he has the education to be good he has the parental support parents parental guidelines to be good his environment is supporting for him to be good what if that same person is supported to the other side to be bad to do unwholesome to live in a cruel destructive manner that same person you can see that he is becoming disastrous destructive harmful he is a curse to the world than a blessing just because he was brought up in such an environment he was given such an education that he is becoming disastrous it is the environment it is the way one is brought up that one wakes up his good or bad side <clears throat> we are fortunate we had the right guidelines from our parents and the environment we grew up if we happen to grow up in such an environment where the crime is often to happen we are becoming a thug becoming a gangster is heroic then we can find that that same person has a completely different character he paves the way for his bad side to rise up so nobody is a saint and nobody is a sinner we are a duality sinner and the saint is within us and this environment the education the people the society the 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 sheer brought up sheer bringing up of, of our lives are not supportive for that sinner they are supporting only for our saint that saint liness to exist they condemn that sinner so therefore we are maintaining our persona of the saint but we should not forget the sinner is a sleep within us 
in any case if in the future the occasion is created the situation is set up for that sinner to rise up one can never say that sinner will not rise up if our consciousness on good and bad become weaker we become negligent that sinner that murderer will come back to life and he will be dominating us to live in such a sinful manner so that light brightness and the darkness both exists within us this is something we always should keep in our mind because then we can have some fear if not in this life but in a future lives we may not have this conscious support to control our sinner within us and that sinner might rise up and lead us to do such sinful deeds which will end up demoting into hellish realms to hells as long as this sinner within us <clears throat> as long as these unwholesome roots are within us nobody is safe everybody is in danger because these unwholesome roots once they are given the opportunity to flourish they will come on to the surface and they will shape up all our activities in that negative aura in that negative shape negative sense and we are descending to the darkness at the behest of those unwholesome deeds in other words as long as this sakaya ditti false self view the self view is there and we are nourishing that self view one is always in the danger of demoting to hellish realms because one can only attain to the stages of sotapan stream entry with the destruction of the sakkaya ditti so attainment of the sotapanna and destruction of the sakkaya ditti that self view is the only way that he can avoid his demotion to hell and how to get rid of this sakkaya ditti two methods to get rid of those sleeping dormant defilements which haven't come to the life getting rid of them that is number 1 number 2 is to stop flourishing to get rid of before they become manipulative before they 
manifest in the harmful manner. The thoughts and emotions of negative. Getting rid of those already arisen unwholesome states. So it is a destruction for the unwholesome states, but not all the unwholesome states are prominent, obvious. There are certain unwholesome states are dominant, are dormant within us, asleep within us. They are called anusayas. Anusaya. Latent tendencies. These latent tendencies or the anusayas are like burning embers, charcoal, under ash. It looks like there is no fire because it is just ash on the surface. But underneath this ash, there is this bright burning charcoal embers waiting for the opportunity to flourish, to burn brightly, waiting for the opportunity. They are dormant asleep because they have no opportunity. And there are seven Anusayas, Satta Anusayas in Pali, in the Tipitaka. They are sensual pleasure, aversion, conceit, views, doubt, passion for becoming and ignorance. They are defilements. The nature of these defilements is that they are not active within you. They are hiding, asleep within you. Why they are hiding? Because you are not providing them the opportunity to flourish. You are consciously avoiding all the situations where that you can be engaged in sensual pleasures, in anger, wrong views, doubting, you are avoiding all these situations. Then these Defilements are asleep, hiding. So they are called Anusayas. As I said before, the murderer is in you, but you are not providing the right situation. A rapist can be in someone, but he's not giving that opportunity for that rapist to wake up. A murderer a thief is there, but his consciousness is taught that healing things are bad. He's been taught not to steal. The bad results of stealing. So his consciousness is not letting that thief within you, within that mind to rise up, but that thief is there. The murderer, the thief, the liar, all the criminals are within you. You are just not allowing them to come up. So they are gone to sleep. But it is half asleep, half awake, keeping one eye open, 
waiting for the right time. This is how the defilements in the mode of sleepiness function. They are called anusayas. There are seven anusayas. I repeat for your benefit, sensual passion, aversion, conceit, views, doubt, passion for becoming, we call Baba Tanha and ignorance. Now, what is the best of meditation? The best of meditation is the meditation that helps someone to get rid of these sleeping, dormant, hiding defilements out of the system. If a meditation is helping somebody to get rid of these anusayas out of him, that meditation is the best. But not all the meditations are helping that. Some meditations are guiding to forget them. Okay, you forget them and concentrate on something else. As long as you suppress those defilements and concentrate on something else, you are good. But what happens after your concentration gone, your suppression on those defilements gone, what would happen? The danger happened. There was a monk in the times of kings in Sri Lanka, in the ancient, in the olden days, in Anuradhapura. He was a junior novice, Samanera, and he could concentrate very well. And with the concentration, he had developed some psychological powers that he could walk on the sky. He could travel in the sky. He had these magical powers, psychological powers. He was always ready to show off that power. He had a teacher and teacher was an enlightened being, enlightened master. One day this teacher asked this novice monk to bring him some flowers in order to offer to Swarnamali Stupa, Swarnamali Saya. At the request of the teacher, this novice monk, he just did not go to the neighborhood to pick up some flowers to pluck out some lotuses. He went to Himalayas, India, Anuradhapura to India, Himalayas, and brought flowers from Himalayas and gave the bag to teacher. While giving the bag to teacher, he tricked his teacher with the determination, no matter how many times my teacher offer flowers around the stupa, may the flower not over. And the teacher was offering repeatedly. Few times he offered around the stupa, but the bag is not empty. It looks like he hasn't even touched flowers. It is full of flowers. Then the teacher understood. His own student made a trick on him. Then seeing the future, teacher advised him, if you do not stop this nonsense, this showing of your psychological powers, <clears throat> be careful. If you don't stop this, 
you are going to be a husband to a woman who has lost one of her eyes, who is partly blind. But like anything else, power is drug, like money, like fame. It is not just marijuana or hashish, not just alcohol make you drunk. Money, power, prestige, fame, these things can make you drunk also. And this young monk was drunk with his power. He did not heed to his teacher. His youth, his young age, and his psychological powers. He was not ready to listen to his teacher. The wild teacher was walking on the ground. He was flying. He was walking in the sky. In his flight, he happened to hurt a young girl. While plucking up, while picking up some lotuses in a pond, she was singing and her singing was so melodious, so beautiful. And the junior monk, in his flight, he heard this musical voice. As soon as he heard this musical voice, he was attracted to that voice. What happened? His psychological powers all gone, completely gone. Sensual desires, he was suppressing it with his concentration and that sensual pleasures rose up. Now no more concentration. That sensual pleasure came up to the surface of the mind and he just landed on the banks of the pond and he has no control anymore. Those suppressed defilements, Anusaya is now taking control over him. Now they are taking revenge on him because he has been suppressing them, suppressing those Anusayas, those defilements for so long, they want to take revenge on him. He has no control. He asked the girl to marry him and they married. They got married and now he has to learn a profession. So he started learning weaving and he became a weaver. He was working on his in his shop, in his factory one day. The wife was late to come with his food. He was so hungry. And the wife came. The food was not good. It was, it was not delicious at all. So he was so angry. He started fighting with, arguing with the wife. In the argument, in his anger, he took a needle and threw it at the wife. And that needle went straight to one of her eyes and blinded her. Now she is one eye blind. When he saw this, he remembered his teacher, his advice. But it is too late now. He cannot go back. This is what happened when you suppress the defilements. So suppression is not a cure. You have to find an elimination on these defilements. That's why Buddha introduced the meditation technique called 
vipassana a meditation of insight this insight meditation when somebody practices we explain these four types of satipatthana establishment of mindfulness in our previous talks the purpose of this satipatthana insight meditation vipassana is to eliminate eliminate two areas of negativity one area is these defilements in the form of sleepiness in the form of hiding oblivious to you within you and the second area is the accumulation sankharas based on the defilements throughout our rotating infinite life after life in this sansara we have generated so much of accumulations karmic accumulations today what we are experiencing good or bad they are not just based on our immediate past life you cannot complain everything to the immediate past life today what we are experiencing can be related to thousands of lifetimes ago as the opportunity arise they come onto the surface that's how things happen if you have the environment of good harmless peaceful nobody disturb another nobody harm another a peaceful environment do you think the negative karmic energies within you have the opportunity to rise up no they don't that is why in the mangala sutta this factor of blessing is there pati roop desh vaso cha living in peaceful convenient suitable environment if somebody is living in such a beautiful peaceful environment that environment itself is not providing the reasons for those unwholesome deposits of karma to surface but it doesn't mean they go away those deposits of unwholesome karma will wait to revenge on you in the next life or next after next until the attainment of nibbana these accumulations will follow come behind at the right time right opportunity they come onto the surface and give results that's how karma works that's why karma is so mysterious the way it works so how can we get rid of these accumulations sankharas vipassana insight meditation it it is very clearly there lord buddha has very clearly explained to us in vipassana how to get rid of these sankharas yeah these sankharas these accumulations are food for the mind for the mind to prolong for the mind to continue and how does this mind continue based on what based on what nutriment 
the nutriment for the consciousness to prevail is sankara's accumulations yeah in vipassana it is very clearly explained how our mind at present survive on the present food provided with our reactions to the present experiences in the world with anger with love jealousy positive or negative manner we react to the experiences that we are receiving from the world that very reaction is the depositing of karma and in vipassana buddha says stop this reaction and respond to them as they are impermanent as they are causes for misery as they are selfless soulless they are just activities don't react to them respond to them comprehend them understand them as they are your niso manasikar reflect wisely on them see how they arise exist and vanish so in vipassana one practices stop the present accumulation present sankaras and then what happened mind finds no food in the present no nutrients for the consciousness in the present existing times now from where he can find food like a camel living on the food that he ate before that consciousness will find the nutrients from the past accumulations so the past accumulated memories of hatred love good or bad both start coming onto the surface then again that vipassana practitioner apply that same technique on those surfacing past memories emotions positive negative without any hierarchy without any difference he apply that same awareness of impermanence misery and selflessness one of them he will apply and with that application he is not nourishing he is not allowing consciousness to nourish on those past accumulations but he is removing them removing them getting out of them reducing their powers so if someone were to practice like that he is eliminating the accumulations within one after the other these accumulations will come onto the surface and vanish because he doesn't let them nourish his consciousness and he is not letting them to flourish and control him he is observing them in the form of in the in the in the perspective of impermanence in the perspective of misery dukkha and the selfless anatta so he get rid of these accumulations one day soon or later there's a possibility that he can get rid of all the accumulations visankara gatam chittam his mind his consciousness is gone to the accumulation less he has no more accumulations and with that purity in the mind he has also got rid of all those defilements in the form of a sleep we call it anusayas these latent tendencies he has got rid of got rid of them also so these are the efforts 
that one apply for the getting rid of unwholesome first one is to stop arising those unarisen defilements within if they arise don't let them flourish don't let them control you for example a tendency to kill arise what would happen if you allow that tendency to manipulate you make you a killer make you a thief make you a liar make you a rapist what would happen but there are unfortunate cases that people allow those tendencies to manipulate them they become slaves to them and they get destroyed so those defilements that have already arisen you should not allow them to control you but to destroy you that is the second step and with that you get rid of the sanskaras accumulations the deposits and also latent tendencies so these are the two aspects of the effort remember effort is a singular entity which has four aspects first two aspects are concentrated upon the negative side how to stop arising how to destroy without letting them to flourish unwholesome states of the mind and how to get rid of them before even they rise up vipassana that is the best of the meditation because if a meditation gives you a temporary soothing a temporary bliss and joy that meditation is not that great in vipassana one enjoys the bliss the joy the happiness and that is not temporary the bliss and joy that one experiences in vipassana is not something he received with the suppression of the defilements it is something he received with the destruction with the de with the elimination of the defilements so vipassana helps us to get rid of those defilements in the form of anusayas latent tendencies and not to have a fear for the demotion to the hellish realms as our future lives one who got rid of such defilements which lead one to hell are called the sotapanna stream winner because as one get rid of this fetter this hindrance called sakaya ditti self view he get rid of all those powerful unwholesome defilements which can lead him to hell for somebody who attain to sotapan only the kama sugati blissful realms of sense pleasures 
are destined. He will never be born in hell. He will be born in only the blissful realms. Because with the destruction of Sakayadity, self-view, he has got rid of those tendencies which can surface and drive him to hell. So he get rid of those defilements in the sleeping mode, asleep within him, and also he get rid of those defilements as they are coming up onto the surface without letting them to flourish. Then that also vipassana, insight meditation. Insight meditation is the true and authentic technique one should apply, one can apply to get rid of these unwholesome aspects of life, states of life. And if somebody is putting effort, that effort is samapadhana, the right effort, right striving. And that right striving is to get rid of the defilements, unwholesome states that have not risen yet and the unwholesome states that have already arisen without letting them flourish or control you, you get rid of them. It is the technique vipassana that you should apply. The effort you put in to apply this vipassana is Amma Padahana. Thank you.